Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same as we are liberated from our own fear. Our presence automatically liberates others. Sir, I just want to say thank you. You saved my life. Thank you, sir. All of you. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Good job. <laughs> Have to beat that young man up. Here we go. Here we go. Yes, sir. Let's get ready to rumble. Everybody stand up. You've been sitting down. Stand up. We got some music for you. Here we go. Let's go. Start clapping. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. There we go. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Good job. Everybody get up. Good job. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to get it done. Yes. There we go. Cut the music. Cut the music. See, I always wanted a standing ovation. Turn the lights back up. See, that's the way to get a standing ovation. When they told me I was coming here, I couldn't wait to get here to see what I had to say. <laughs> and I know what a lot of you guys are thinking. I do not have ESP, but I do have ESPN. <laughs> and a lot of you guys are thinking, Samuel Jackson is taller than Coach Carter. Yes, Samuel Jackson is taller, but I think I can outrun him. And believe it or not, I'm from this huge town here, not locally, but close, about two and a half hours away, called Macomb, Mississippi. And I'm going to take you back a little bit further. Macomb is where they had the stoplight. I'm from Fernwood, Mississippi. And as you're exiting the road going to Fernwood, Mississippi, at the top of this sign, it says you're now entering Fernwood, Mississippi. And at the bottom of that same sign, it says you're now leaving Fernwood, Mississippi. <laughs> See, we're not human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And see, there's a difference between being broke and being poor. Being broke is just an economic condition. But being poor is a disabling frame of mind and a depressed of one's condition. There's no one here that's depressed because you're here to make connections. You're on ready, ready. You see me? We're on ready, ready. And you say, Coach, if I stay on the gas, I'm going to hit something. But if you stay on the brake, you can't go nowhere. You hear me? So you don't get paid by the hour. You get paid by the value you bring to the hour. And you must always do more than what you're paid for as an investment in your future. So as you're here, it's time to go to work. You're looking at a Mississippi kid who sat there. <laughs> and I want everybody to say this with me because I don't know where I've caught you in your life right now. But. My family, when we lived in Fernwood, Mississippi, we was never 
poor. We were just broke. <laughs> when our family passed by a bank, it set off the alarm. <laughs> we were toe up from the flow up. But the greatest thing is education was the key to it all. See, that was the key. You guys are in the people's business. Now, how do a little kid who go from Fernwood, Mississippi to end up on the Dr. Phil show? Who the Carter clan, I didn't even know I had a future. But my teachers did, my administrators did, and they the one who influenced me to do better, that you can do better. And then you gotta set some high expectations. And then we gotta go out and go to work. See, hard work is a skill. Hard work is a skill. So a lot of you guys, I don't know why I called you the seasons of your life. When I lived in Fernwood, Mississippi, it was winter. It was winter. But guess what? Since the beginning of time, springtime have always followed winter. Now, man have been recording history for about 7,500 years when he was in a cave drawing on the walls, animals and stuff saying, I was here. I was here. It was the seasons. And I don't care what it is, you're going to have winter in your life. Winter is going to come along, but the way you get through winter is with a great education, with a great plan. See, a lot of people have told you that knowledge is power. Knowledge is not power. The execution of knowledge is power. And they always tell you, you got to be in the right place at the right time to be successful. I'm in Fernwood, Mississippi. How could I be in the right place? But I was in the right place. And guess what? We moved to California. You understand? And I start to blossom. I was tougher than every kid there. I was faster than all of them. I won my first track meet. I didn't even have no track shoes on. Because I was used to running on the rocks in Fernwood, eating that red dirt. And I was stronger than everybody else too. And I was meaner than everybody else. And I'm gonna give you the reason that I was meaner and tougher than anybody else in the state of California. Now, I used to pray to God all the time, God, please get me to California. And God delivered me to Richmond, California, one of the most dangerous cities in the state of California. So you have to be careful for what you ask for and to be a little more specific of what you really want in this thing called life. Because guess what? You can't get out alive. I've never seen a Brinks truck follow a hearse to a funeral. I've never seen it. But I have seen this. When you reset your preset, everybody say it. Reset. Say it again. Reset. Say it again. Reset. Say it again. Reset. When you reset your preset, I don't care what it is. I rented a car. You understand? I happen to like some rap music. When you get in the car, I turned it on, it was country western. So what did I do? I reset my preset and vice versa. So what do you do in your life when things are not going right? You reset your preset. I don't care what side of the track you're born on, how big you are, how small you are. You notice the guy at the gym, the biggest guy always have on the smallest shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that crazy always over there next to the mirror? <laughs> you know, as I get bigger, I just buy a bigger suit. I see another thing, I started school uniforms. I had to reset my preset. I had two pair of pants and two shirts, they were the same color. And mama would wash one one day, I would wear the next one. Now what are they doing now in school? They call it school uniforms. I was 40 years ahead of my time. <laughs> see, that's the thing, you gotta reset your preset. It's all in the way you think. If you don't see great things happening to you, they will not happen. Seven years old, I wrote my mama this note. I came home and we didn't have enough gas in the tank for my mama to finish the meal, and my mom was crying. The only weapon I had in my arsenal, I had the ability to write, and I wrote my mama this note. 52 years ago, and I wrote my mama this note, and I said, Mama, one day they're gonna make a movie about me, and I'm gonna buy you a big house, and pay off all of your bills, mama, and you never have to cry again. Love, Kenny Ray. I was Kenny Ray before I became Coach Carter. Now, a lot of you guys are looking at me and saying, Coach, did you buy your mama a big house? Yes, I did. 
Did you pay all, all of her bills? No, my mama is an expensive girl. <laughs> and you're looking at me, yes, I do have seven sisters like in the movie. Yes, I have a t-shirt that says, I survived seven sisters. And I have highly opinionated sisters. But see, the greatest thing about it, when you grow up in a house with a lot of love, at the greatest big brother in the world, I have one brother, all-American football player, just got inducted to the Football Hall of Fame at Alcorn State. The Carter clan, we just know how to win. See, winners do one thing, they just simply win. I don't accept no excuses because I don't make any excuses. With my team, I have seven of these championship rings. My team just have a habit of winning because we get it done. I wonder why. We get it done. My daddy hauled puff wood to make a living. I said, no, daddy, I ain't going to do that. I'm going to wear a suit. You understand that he's the boy, you damn well better be smart. <laughs> now, my dad had a second grade education and my mom had a sixth grade education, but all nine of us entered college because they understood how important education was. You don't really understand how important you are. When that kid in the movie said, Coach Carter, thank you for saving my life, I was just doing my job at Richmond High School. And it was a job. When you have a job, that means just over broke. <laughs> That's what the meaning of it, a jumping out of bed, one of the two, you take your choice, <laughs> all right? But I had a job at Richmond High School and I turned it into a career. The way I turned it into a career, guess what? I love what I did and I gave it my all. And I was on the gas all the time. When you see my team play, we on the gas all the time. I ain't trying to find no break. Now here at Connections, you use a little gas, a little break. A little gas, a little break. And hopefully, some man like this young man, stand up, please sir. Yes, stand up. That man has his hands on the steering wheel. So he can lead you somewhere. So what is your GPS? Where is it leading you? And what are you doing? See, this thing called life, you gotta live it because you can't get out alive. You cannot get out alive. So the, the person to the right of you and to the left of you, shake their hand right now and say, I validate your ability to be successful. <laughs> Is everybody validated? Yeah. Is everybody validated? I got it. Everybody validated? Yeah. Man, this boy, you guys can't play for Coach Carter. Is everybody validated? Yeah. Is everybody validated? Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. So you gotta have, listen, that's what I'm telling you. Yeah. How do you become successful? Being validated. Being validated. How often you do something and the intensity in which you do it. Can't you tell I'm intense? Yeah. I get it done. Well, Thank you, ma'am. I like you, come up here, come up here. Bring me a book, bring me the books, books. I like you, young lady. See, I like people who speak up. Now she's getting the new version of my new book called Coach Carter, Yes Ma'am, No Sir. You just validated me. Hey, don't. <laughs> Don't she look like one of those rapper girls that be in the rap videos? Thank you. You're welcome. Very nice to meet you. You too. Look, and she got all these stud diamonds in her ear. She got on a Mr. T starter kit. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure meeting you, ma'am. You too. See, the greatest thing about this thing called life, you got to smile even when things are going bad for you. You got to start dancing right when things are going bad for you. You got to just start dancing right in the middle of it. You got to start dancing. When I went to California, I had a fight. My first two hours in California, I had seven fights. Because at the time, they would say stuff about your mom. You say something about my mom, I was putting them things on you. You understand? Look at the circles under my eyes. Make one of my sisters cry. I'm coming to see you, fella. And how come that I have two sisters? I'm still paying their mortgage. It could be 5,000 good men in a room, and they'll go find the one. <laughs> Need I say more? I see a lot of you guys have that same experience. And they go, Ken, I'm going, why this gentleman? 
because I can help him. And he have time for me. I go, he got all them ain't got. And they tell me, what you mean, ain't got? He ain't got no job. He ain't got no car. And he ain't got no money. So what do they do? They call a little brother. But see, the greatest thing about being the one in the family, and another thing, your family is supposed to borrow money and not pay you back. The good Lord know what he was doing. Think about it. The first two letters of family, F-A, stands for financial aid. <laughs> see, even God himself reset his preset. See, it takes your imagination to get things done. You will not get paid by the hour. You'll get paid by the value you bring to the hour. So you got to go get it done. The book that you've been promising yourself you were going to write, you got to write that book. You understand? And my sisters all are dyslexic. I'm talking about my family. I'm not being a show I'm just talking about my seven sisters because they're, they're part of my, my presentation and my life. Guess what? All seven of my sisters are dyslexic. I just figured that out. Because over the years, they have lost probably about 5,000 pounds. But they keep finding them back year after year. <laughs> so when I give them my credit card to go to the YMCA to work out, they're dyslexic. They end up at the mall at Macy's. <laughs> See, he didn't get that, young lady. Would you explain that to him? He, that just went right over his head. Dyslexia, young man? YMCA? Macy's. <laughs> Let me refer to that retail therapy. <laughs> See, that's the greatest thing about this thing called life. You got to sit there and you got to go get it. And you got to have some mental toughness about you. You just can't give in all the time. Sometimes you just got to fight. Look at the circles under my eyes. Those are from all the fights I didn't win. And my mother used to ask me, baby, how did you get two black eyes in one fight? I said, mama, I think he punched me like this. But I never wore sunglasses or anything. I just wore my black eyes, just, that was just the way it was. But I was coming to get you the next day, fella. Oh yeah, I was coming to get you. And so this is the thing called life. This thing called success, how often you do things and the intensity in which you do it. You gotta wake up with some intensity in your life. You can't sit there and just think, man, I wish this would happen to me. Well, you got to go out and make it happen for you. You got to go out and get it done. You can't sit there and wish for things. You see greatness in everybody else but you. You got to see it in yourself. How do we win? We win by effort. And you got to be ready to play this thing called life. You got to be ready. Ready, ready. You got to be ready to play, Mike. Get that chest out. Yes, sir. You ain't got no heart condition or nothing, right? No, no, not at all. All right, get that chest out. Yes, sir. Huh, huh, huh. You see? See, when you walk by males, they always cowboy up. Hit me, coach. I wish you would hit me. See, they always cowboy up. Hit me. But see, the greatest thing about this thing called life, see, now I just hit Michael. Look at him smiling. Get the camera over him. Look. See how I'm smiling? Now I just hit him. See, when you well liked, that is the situation. People do business with people they like. You got to have a pleasing personality. So all of those five-year lesson plans, get rid of them. That just don't work. That dog just ain't going to hunt. You understand? I taught the entrepreneurs class at Richmond High School. I had 150 people in my class. They had to move it to the auditorium. Because once we start having success, people love success. And they go, Coach, is Courtney... You was able to help him in his life and, and, and get him to come. I won't be in your class. I never turned a student down. I gave more homework than anybody in the history of California. And I gave him twice as much on weekends because he got two days off. <laughs> and another thing, do not take your kid's cell phone. Listen, you see your cell phone? There's more technology in this cell phone than it took to put a man on the moon in 1969. Why are you taking this tool from them? Let those kids keep those phones. Take their chargers. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, let them keep that phone. You take that charger. That's what makes all of them. When it gets to 20%, that attitude changed dramatically. 
So you got to be on the gas. You got to be on. Give me a hug, girl. Come here. Listen. So look, you look the best you can. You smell the like best you can. And you do all the things you need to. Look at him. Look at his presentation. Look at him. He cool as can be. Look at him. He dapper as can be. Man, see, that's the thing. What is your presentation like every day you wake up? I don't wear men's cologne. I buy all that expensive stuff for my sisters. Whatever they have left over, that's what I wear. <laughs> Lady asked, just asked me a while ago. She said, Coach, you smell so good. I told her, it's Chance. <laughs> and I said, Chance? She said, I said, yeah. And I said, whatever they have, I mix it all together. And whatever it is, I take a chance. <laughs> So that's just how this thing works called life. You got to be ready to play. Look at this. Got my picture. Turn to the thing. Give me that pen. Let me see. I'm going to sign that for you. Here. Look at. See, I like that. I'm walking around. She ready. See, that's the thing. See, you got to be ready for this thing called life. You got to be ready to play. And we got kids here. Look at that. Coming to support mom, right? That's the teacher. Wait, that is so great. See, that's what I'm talking about. If you do a great job, your kids are never going to re- forget you. If you do a terrible job, they're never going to forget you. So it's much easier to do something great. Listen, it's much easier to do something great. And when I say greatness, this is how that works. Greatness is defined by the service that we give to other people. Now, what kind of service are you giving? What kind of service are you giving? I'm asking you, what kind of service are you giving? Intense. There we go. So now, say it again. Reset my preset. Say it. Reset my preset. Say it again. Reset my preset. Say it again. Now, I'm going to show you guys a picture that you guys just won't believe. Could you put that picture on the screen? Now, this is a relationship I done had for 50 years. Now, ever who can tell me it is in this row right here, you young ladies, pick me out and I'll give you a book. Which one is me? Which one is me? With the red shirt. Wow. That is interesting. Believe it or not, I done had this relationship. You're right. Come here, young lady. Bring me a book, please. Bring me the th all the books, please. That's me holding the stick. Because I'm going to tell you why I was holding the stick. You about ready to fight somebody. Yes, ma'am. And you see this. I stayed up all night last night. I already autographed these books. <laughs> so you guys ain't going to have to be, when you come back there to buy one, you ain't got to be saying, Coach, could you autograph this for me? It's already autographed. You listen. Harder, not harder, right? Yes, ma'am. We get it done. Now, listen. Believe it or not, I done had a 50-year relationship with these young men. And guess what? All four of those young men are here today with me. Aww. Young man, would you come up on stage, please? Come up on stage. Everybody, come on up. Now, can you believe this? I've been knowing these guys for 50 years plus, and we're still friends. Give them a hand. Good job. Get in your position. Let's get in our position. Craig, you're over here. That was me here. Now, we on this side, Floyd. <laughs> Cello, you on the other side. This is real, real. Yep, this is real. Yep. Here we are right here. Oh, it depends on how you're looking at the screen. <laughs> See, I reset my preset. And since I'm the presenter, I get to position them any way I want. So let's switch back over then. Let's go back over the other way. <laughs> See, now there we go. 50 years of a relationship, and I love these guys. They were my next door neighbor. When they ate, I put my foot right under the table just like them. And remember, I told you I had a stick that I kept with me? 
It was for this gentleman right here. <laughs> the reason Coach Carter is on this stage for right now is because of this gentleman right here. He beat me up every single day. <laughs> Had my hand down in old red dirt and just, that's why I have no hair now. Just. And this gentleman on the end, now all of these are brothers too, and I'm part of the family too, but these are blood brothers. But guess what? This guy here, when he tackled me in football, always gave me a little extra. <laughs> the knee and the chest. And all these guys played football on the same team at South Pike High School. Give me a hand. And I cannot talk to these guys for six months. When I pick up the phone and start talking, it's just like I talked to them yesterday. So it's all about relationships. People do business with people they like. You gotta have a pleasing personality. Now, if you don't have a pleasing personality and you walk around nagging all the time, guess what happens? People don't wanna be around you. They don't wanna be around you. You ain't gonna get no promotion. The way you get a promotion, you work your way to the promotion. If you don't like your position, you work your way out of it. And the way you work it is not physical work all the time. You gotta use that mental capacity that you have. See, a lot of you guys live on this mental candy all the time. You can't live on mental candy all the time. You actually got to get in there and put some work in. You got to work hard and smart. And then you got to have a team. This is my team. The reason Coach Carter have a movie is because of these guys right here. We play ball every single day. When I got to California, I was so much better than everybody else because of these gentlemen right here. I was faster than everybody else. They didn't even have no track shoes. <laughs> because of this gentleman right here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> See, that's the other thing about family. You always got to pay them. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, you always got to pay them. <laughs> and see, you pay the two guys who can hurt you. <laughs> see, this gentleman here is so intellectual. Let me let me tell you about this young man. You guys will not believe it. Not only are they wonderful fathers, but guess what? This young man, go to that microphone, please. I'm making these people a part of my presentation because it's that important. You're talking about family, friends, and keeping great relationships. This young man had four kids. All four of them was at the top of the class every single graduation. Tell me, Floyd, speak up to the mic. How did you do it? What is that name called when the, your kid is number one in the class? What is it called? Valedictorian. I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> That's how far I was. Listen, if you add all my SAT scores up together, they still wouldn't, they, his kid take the test once. I took it six times. Listen, yes, I took it six times. <laughs> yeah, you looked at me. <laughs> but every time I took it, I got a better, because to get an athletic scholarship, you have to get 1050 to get an athletic scholarship. So I started off as, as a sophomore, I got 800. And then every year I start to take it, I got better and better. And I ended up around 1150. So I was bright, but I just didn't know how bright I was. And all it took was some effort. Now, what is that name again, Mr. Floyd? And you did that all by yourself. Your wife didn't have nothing to do with it, I'm sure. <laughs> You, you did it all by yourself. <laughs> she helps up. Would you stand up, please? Give her a hand. Listen, this gentleman did it once. He got, the, he got the blueprint, right? Now, once he got the blueprint, his other kids just followed. So what kind of blueprint? That's why you're here. The name of this conference is called Connections. You need to meet 100 new people while you're here. At least, minimum. If I was working this crowd, I would meet, a, it, it was 1,400 to register. i meet 1,399. Because one of you guys, I just ain't gonna like. <laughs> but you gotta put all those things aside when it comes to this thing called business, when it comes to this thing called life. You gotta live this thing called life because you can't get out alive. These guys are my friends for life. These are my brothers for life. 
And let me tell you one thing. If you don't have a team together, you can't win in this thing called life. You got to have a team. Give my team a hand, please. Thank you. But did you just see that picture? We was the little rascals before that were the little rascals. Look at that picture. Look at that. Boy, we were a homely group, right? Look, nobody have on shoes. And I don't know why I had on a shirt, because normally I never wore a shirt. And I'm dressed in white. When I would go outside, dirt would just go. But see, I have seven sisters. And see, when you have seven sisters, I played baseball. You wouldn't believe it. I couldn't hit nothing, but boy, my pants had creases in them. I look good. <laughs> see, if you look good, you play good. If you play good, they pay good. See, everybody always talk about they want to make a lot of money, right? You don't want to make a lot of money. You want to earn your money. The only people who make money work in Washington, D.C. at the U.S. Mint. And my cousin Mookie in his garage. <laughs> but we ain't talking about Mookie right now. So the way you're going to get to the next step is you got to have the ability to think. The world always make room for great thinkers. The universe just simply bends when you have a will to just bend it. Now, as you can see, I'm vertically challenged. I played pro ball for two weeks. <laughs> that was my career. Now, I should have played football or baseball because I was absolutely terrific at it. But guess what? My first two times as a freshman playing varsity, I touched the football. My, actually, my first three times, I ran touchdowns. Where would my career to go but down? Everybody thought every time I touched the ball, I should be scoring a touchdown. Now, my brother, it was that way. Every time he turned, touched the ball, my brother was so fast, he actually caught a rabbit. And that's actually true. He actually caught a rabbit. They actually put it in the newspaper. It changed the Carter's life. And we had an a, a uncle called Uncle Dove, and he said, they called my daddy <laughs> Dan. They said, Dan and them wake up in the morning and they hungry. He said, he send that older boy out there and he just go chase rabbits. <laughs> he said, he run up beside one and fill him. He said, oh, he ain't fat enough. Let him go. <laughs> he run up against another. But see, that's how that legacy started. And I got the greatest big brother in the world and the greatest big sister in the world. And that's why I'm standing on this stage. You got to have some family members who care about you. You got to have some teachers who believe in you. Whether it's at church, I don't care. You got to stay healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, and financially. So I don't care if you don't have what you want in your pocket right now. You see, I'm still playing Grover and Craig. You see, Craig, I always tell you, it's time to get paid. <laughs> you feel me? And I don't mind, because this is the thing. Look what they did for me. Now, I've been rich and I've been poor. Being rich is much better. I ain't never been wealthy, though. When you have seven sisters, you don't ever get wealthy. <laughs> but the greatest thing about this, this thing called life, you got to live it. And we got to continually live our lives. And we got to sit there. And as a coach, guess what? Everybody gave me recognition for coaching the boys team. But let me tell you, I coached the girls team first. My first coaching job was the girls team. They had won no games in like four years. And I was jumping up and down. I want the job. And I wonder why nobody else wanted the job. Let me tell you my <laughs> involvement with these young ladies. I received a job one week before they had their first game. I did not even take the basketballs out of the closet. I just let the girls sit in a circle and talk about their day. Because I knew it was more important from dealing with my sisters that young ladies get along with each other than there was to have skill, a basketball skill. And so I implemented one of the greatest things ever, huh? one of the greatest things ever, and it was simply this. When you pass the ball four times, no matter where you are, you shoot the ball. The girls used to be like this, one, two, three, four. Coach Carter, I have the ball, it was Stephanie. I have the ball, what do I do with it? Shoot it! She was almost at the half court. She took the ball in one hand and threw it, hit nothing but net. I was the greatest coach ever. <laughs> now, you're talking about when it shows up. Now, I only ask men this question, because they really understand sports. Man, do men really understand sports. So I only ask men this question. And it's simply this. 
Young man, we had no practice at all. And on our first 25 basketball games, sir, Again, you think we won? Sir. Marcus. Um, no practice. Not very many. How many? Give me a number. Uh, 25, six. Six. How many games do you think we won? Three. Three. I only asked males this question. How many games do you think we won? 25. Who said zero? <laughs> <laughs> How many games do you think we won? 20. How many games do you think we won, sir? Now, listen, stand up, Craig. <laughs> you said zero, right? <laughs> right. All I'm saying to you is, dude, I have a movie. <laughs> <laughs> of course we won all our games. That's what we do. <laughs> we win. <laughs> but let me tell you, when I was telling you about winter showing up in your life, I don't know where I've caught a lot of you guys. It could be winter time of year. You ain't quite got your finances right. Ain't quite got the car you want to drive. Ain't got the house you want. Ain't the man you want to date. Let that woman land alone. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying. My grandmother used to always say this. She said, half a wagon makes less noise than an empty wagon. <laughs> so what I'm saying to you is this here. You need to fly your duck to another pond. <laughs> So that's how you win this thing. Of course we won. The way we won was simply this. I implemented one of the greatest things ever. And it was simply this. Once you pass this ball, you shoot it. And we're going to hustle to the ball. And we're going to play hard. And we going to have a strategy. But guess what? I learned that from my seven sisters. I always, you know, I was uniquely qualified for that job because I have seven sisters. Most men don't understand how women think. We do all this talk and be all macho and stuff like that, and they have no idea how women think. When I coached now with the boys team, guess what happened? When I coached against another coach and he was really good, I used to send his, one, his wife flowers to her job. <laughs> <laughs> now, she's riding to the game with her husband telling him how great I am. <laughs> how can he coach? Psychologically, you got to win this thing called life. So that's how we win. Craig, I should make you do some push-ups, but since you got a bad back, I'm going to let you run. But I ain't giving you no more bonuses, though. Your bonuses is done. Hey, I'll make up for that. His bonuses is done. So the greatest thing about this is this here. You can't get out alive. I don't know why I caught you. But guess what? You got to keep playing. You got to get the knowledge and some knowledge you got to pay for. It just don't come free. That's why you're at the conference. It's called a connection. Make a connection. Learn something that you didn't know before you walked through this door and you learn something tomorrow and you learn something the next day and you keep on learning. You got to be a lifelong learner with these girls. I was a lifelong learner and we won our first 25 basketball games. Guess what? Now we're on television. I was the only coach in America who understood this. I called my first time out so the girls just, they, they could fix their makeup. <laughs> now, did I understand my girls? And we were playing the game and my point guard would not pass the ball to my leading score. So I called time out and the girls were walking. I said, how come you won't pass her the ball? And she said, coach, I can't stand her. I said, what? She said, Coach, I can't stand her. I said, we're in the middle of a championship game. I don't care. Winter had showed up for me. But guess what? A little gas, a little break, right? A little gas. Now, it's six minutes left in the basketball game, and if she would have been passing it to my leading score, we would be up 10 points if the young lady would have scored our average. Now, I call my final timeout, and as the girls were walking towards me, I yell, I said, pass the ball! Would you believe my entire team started crying on the sideline? <laughs> I'm going like, why are you guys crying? And they, well, coach, you didn't have to yell at her. <laughs> See, they had became family. And guess what? Being quick on your feet, a little gas, a little break. I said, young ladies, gather around. I said, there's a sale at the mall. <laughs> I said, after we win this game, I'm going to take everybody shopping. We won that game by 10 points. <laughs> 
So sometimes you just need something in your life as a little slump buster to get you over the hump, to get you to going. You understand? You ride your bike now, you look at these gas prices. You understand? So you're going to do a little extra now. And the way you do a little extra, you got to win. And you got to get a theme song. Each one of you teachers got to get a theme song. Where my theme song music at? Play me my theme song music. Oh, uh, this is my theme song. I'm your mama, I'm your daddy, trying to keep you out the mouth. Give me a minute, I'm your friend, I sure ain't how to win. I'm your, I'm your coach, man. Oh, give me my glasses. Play it, play it. My glasses. For my, for my. Take off, take off. Man, Ernie Johnson and face off. I can run the place until take first. Like a day job, I'm gonna take off for my face off. Don't let me get my face off. Oh, give me my bling. Put my bling on. <laughs> Cut it. You know what he just said? He said, I teach you how to dribble and shoot. I teach you how to play in the paint, even with my suit on. So that's the way I was. All the other coaches, believe it or not, they would wear their sweats to practice into the game. I never did. I made the promise to my daddy. I said, Daddy, one day, I ain't hauling Puffwood. I'm going to wear a suit. I wore a suit to practice. I wore a suit to school every single day I helped my kids because this is the way the image I wanted to project. See, it's great to be conscious but not self-conscious. You be as... You dress the very best you can. You smell the very best you can. But the one thing I will was always prepared. You got to always do more than what you pay for as an investment in your future. Now, I'm a basketball coach. I'm going to tell you one more basketball story. Believe it or not, after we won the championship with the girls, I got to coach the boys team. And we coached the boys team. They had won like four or five games. Now, with the boys, it's totally different. Now, I got that job like two weeks before they actually had, but we had practice. Now, I'm gonna just show you the difference between men's and women. And just how they just absolutely think. And all you men's and all you people who think you guys are multitaskers. No, it don't work. I do one thing and get it done. I do one thing, get it done. Males, how can you sit there and say, I'm gonna go out and lead the world and you ain't even clean up your own garage? Come on now. Clean up your garage. I start coaching the males team. Now, I'm gonna ask the ladies this. Young lady, our first 25 basketball games, how many do you think we won? 25, you're right. How many do you think we won? 25. How many do you think we won? How many do you think you won? we won over here? Get off your phone, young lady. Come up here, come up here. She over here typing on her phone. I should make you do some push-ups. Yeah, now I'm gonna give you a book. See that? I... It's about my son. Oh, it's about your kid? Yes. Okay, you gonna let him keep his cell phone? Yes. See, mothers always punish kids. This is the greatest thing. Kids are so great with their moms. And explain this to me, ma'am. I had an all American on my team named Courtney Adams. His name is Junior Battle in the movie. Six foot eight, 225 pounds. And his mother will call me, Coach Carter, I have something I want to talk to you about. You made my baby run five miles and his legs are hurting. I'm going, Ms. Anderson, your baby is six foot eight. <laughs> After three feet, no more baby. <laughs> but I don't care what it is, a mama going to always say, that's my baby. But they'll raise their girls to be tough, independent. But when they come to them knucklehead boys, that's my baby. Well, here, I'm going to give you a book. He's 6'4", 300 pounds. He's 6'4", 300 pounds. I really should make you do some push-ups. See, this is the greatest thing. 
Now, the latest figured that out. Of course, we won all our games. And guess what? Winter showed up in the championship game. Winter showed up again. And Worm was in the game. He said, Coach, put me in the game. Coach Carter, put me in the game. And I put Worm in the game. Let me tell you what Worm did in one minute and 30 seconds. He had taken four shots, missed all four of them. He had turned the ball over twice and committed four fouls. All in in a minute and 30 seconds. I couldn't wait to get him out of the game. He ran out the court like, Coach, you going to put me back in? I said, boy, get to the end of the bench. And we're playing, and a gentleman who's actually playing tonight, we was actually playing because he was a freshman, he's actually playing tonight. Google the phone, send me a text, I'll send you a free book. Hey, guess what? He was killing us. I said, hold on to that monster, Junior. And guess what happened? We're playing this game, and now it's winning time. My All-American fouled out of the game. I couldn't believe it. He fouled out of the game. And I'm walking back and forth trying to figure out who could I put in the game? Who can I put in the game? Who can I? Young man, come here quickly. The one I hit in the chest. Hustle up. Hustle! There we go. There we go. See, he's ready. Stand right there. Stand right here, sir. You going to hit me again? Yes, I'm going to hit you again. <laughs> so I'm sitting there with Worm, and I'm, I turn around and bump into Worm. And the referee comes up and says, Coach, you got 20 seconds to put somebody in the game. I'm about to call a technical on you. So I grab Worm. I said, Worm, come here. I said, the school needs you. The team needs you. The community needs you. <laughs> Worm looks at me and says this. Worm looks at me and says, Coach, the team needs me. The school needs me. He said, uh, is the TV cameras on us? I said, Worm, get out there and get ferocious, young man. And Worm was like this. He went, ferocious. I said, young man, get out there and get ferocious. And Worm was like, I said, Worm, get out there and get ferocious. And Worm turned around and looked at me and said, coach, is ferocious on our team? <laughs> He looked at me and said, Coach, it's ferocious on our team, and what is his number? <laughs> I learned a very valuable lesson from that young man that night, and it was simply this. That successful people will go from one failure to the next enthusiastically. Because the only one who believed in Worm that night was Worm. <laughs> because I truly didn't. But Worm entered the game and held an NBA player to zero points. And Worm scored eight points that last four minutes, and we won another championship. That's the lesson I learned. <laughs> Give me some music, young man. I'm finna close. See, because you gotta imagine the greatness happening to you. See, you gotta imagine this greatness happening to you. You gotta imagine this imagine this greatness is happening to you. See, believe it or not, if you don't have no vision, you don't make no connections. You don't build a family. You understand? I have a mastermind group for 52 years. Been talking to these people. They got my best interest at all times. Who's got your best interest? Can you imagine if you wake up with some mental toughness? You ain't living on this mental candy no more. Turn my music up some more. Turn it up. So you got to have some mental capacity and you got to get tough. See, not all of us can become famous, but each and every one of us can become great because greatness is defined by the service that we give to others. You got to continue to give great service. And you got to be on the gas. You got to be ready to play this thing called life. Because guess what? Winter is going to show up. I've had some financial winters. My girlfriend in the seventh grade, Giovanni, is like some other guy. But I had to do that song on her. How you like me now? I put the Mike Jones on her. Back then, you didn't want me. But now I'm hot. You all up on me. Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Mike Jones. See, he's put his name in the song and sold five million copies. And he put his cell phone number in the company. So guess what? How much is your signature worth? You got to imagine it. You got to dream it. Dream big. Act big. Be big. 
You notice the smallest dog make the loudest noise. Always barking at the big dog. Guess what? You got to play this game called life because you can't get out alive. Now, I'm going to be here. I have some information in the back back there for you, some books. My new book. Just got it yesterday. The book I just gave that young man. Had it shipped here first. Can you imagine if you walk around with this tool? You go to page 100. It's got quotes in it. Every day you get up, you read one of these quotes. You're going to feel better. You're going to act better because it's a manual. You got to imagine the great things happening to you. It's only insurance paid up in here, young man. Everybody stand up. Stand up. Now take your right hand, both of your hands, and put over your head. Both of them. Oh, that's a great picture. Let me take a picture of that. Keep your hands up. Keep them hands up. Keep them hands up. Wow, that is, oh, that is so cool. Cool. Now take your right hand and put over your heart. Now turn 360 degrees all the way around. Now put down your hands. Now, when anybody asks you how was Coach Carter presentation here in Mississippi today, this is what I want you to tell them. He made me rise to my feet, raise both of my hands. He touched my heart and he turned me around. God. This is A.J. Carter's baby boy saying, it's a pleasure meeting you. This is Mr. Dan's little boy saying, it's a pleasure meeting you. And you got a great story, you come shake my hand. I'm gonna be around. I have some great information for you. And if you don't wanna stand in line for the book, guess is what you do. Go to coachcarter.com. <laughs> Pay for your book, come back and show me the camera, you get your book and go on. But you're gonna wanna sit there and talk to me. Because guess what, when you meet people, they got to remember you. So don't be passive. I used to be the guy who sat in the corner all the time because I didn't have the proper shoes on. I didn't have the proper clothing on. But guess what? I reset my preset when I got to California. And it came right out of this dirt out of Mississippi. Your job is to make other kids great. That's our job. Give yourselves a hand. And guess what? I have the manual for you. I received the Educator of the Year from Harvard Club twice. And you see, I butchered the human language. <laughs> but guess what? My enthusiasm takes care of all the other stuff that I'm liking. You understand? When I played basketball, when I played football, I didn't try to run around you. I was going to run over you. Sometimes I ran around you twice. I was so fast. So this is the greatest thing. When people sit there and ask you, and we're going to say it together one more time, how was Coach Carter presentation here in Mississippi? Let's say it together. He made me rise to my feet, raise both of my hands. He touched my heart, and he turned me around. I love you guys all. I'll see you in the back. Come on up, young man. Hey, I'm, hey, I'm going to get the president some bling. Hey, he got some bling. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Go ahead. A lot of people think knowledge is power. No, the use of knowledge is power. And people who have access to the best information are usually the most successful in our society. Well, I call it inspiration. A lot of people say, oh, coach, you motivated people. Well, once the motivator is gone, well, you're not motivated anymore. But when you're inspired, it takes on a life of its own. I love to learn. It doesn't matter what subject you're talking about. If it's something I don't know, then I want to learn about it. And if it's something I already know about, then I want to learn more. I have an insatiable curiosity about all forms of human behavior and about life in general. Everything in this world fills me with wonder. Long before I became Coach Carter of Hollywood Recognition, portrayed in a blockbuster film by Mr. Samuel Jackson, I was Kenny Ray Carter, 
a boy who watched his parents tirelessly raise nine kids on a farm in rural Mississippi. As it turned out, it was the perfect backdrop to an inspired life that has become a touchstone of limitless possibilities and success. I was too young to see that then. Instead, I wondered, why do we seem to have less than others? We were not poor. We were broke. Being broke is just an economic condition. But being poor is a disabling frame of mind and a depressed condition of the human spirit. So we were never, ever depressed. We were just broke. I tell people that my family was so broke that when we rode by the bank, we set off the alarm. The reality, I came to understand, was that even though we were broke, we had much more than most. More love, support, and togetherness. And those elements sustained us and helped shape me into the man of honor, commitment, and achievement. It was a long journey that started when I was a kid. Seeing my parents work hard to provide for us instilled a dogged work ethic in me that showed when I was just seven years old. And it still resides in me today. At that young age, I started my first business. I placed small, undeveloped cucumbers inside long neck bottles and waited until they grew so they could not come out. It made people wonder how I got that big cucumber through that narrow bottleneck. I loaded up my unique novelties into my little red wagon, and with no shoes or shirt, I headed into town to set up shop. I sold them for five dollars. If someone had a ten dollar bill, I never gave change. Instead, I sold him too. I just had no fear. And I ended up making more in a day than my mom and dad. That was where my road to being a leader began. Years later, when our family moved across the country to Richmond, California, I carried that spirit of ownership and leadership with me. They call me Coach Carter, but I call myself a teacher. A coach designs plays and sets up things for a player to do on the court. A teacher explains why you do certain things to get a desired result. Martin Luther King said this, he said, Not all of us can become famous, but each and every one of us can become great because greatness is defined by the service that we give to others. 